Astro Tarot Show, and I am your celestial host, Serona Rose. And we have another action-packed 30 minutes of astrology going on. We've got a lot of energy happening this week. And, you know, and we've been having a lot of energy going on. April, as I've said before, is very intriguing and it's interesting how it's unfolding. Uh, March, April, and May are going to be very big months like I've discussed before. So there's a lot of energies that are unfolding here and a lot of messages and um, there's a lot of conversation that's going on and, and I'm trying my best to make sure that everyone gets to, um, gets to hear this information. If you have uh, missed any of my shows, you can always check it out on my YouTube or Rumble channels and you can hear the past episodes, except for last week's. I am not airing that live. Um, that was just an exclusive for Fringed, so you could hear your horoscope for the next year, and that was just for Fringe TV. So anyway, let's get on to it. We got a lot of stuff going on. So back on the 11th, we had some movement. We had a really good placement. We had the Sun and Jupiter coming together in Aries, and oh my goodness, you talk about <clears throat> exciting jupiter entered into the heart of the sun right he came and he gave his best to the sun and that is almost as if um he dies and he is resurrected because as he goes into the sun you will not be able to see him because of the rays it's only after he leaves uh, the sun, or the sun leaves him, I should say, um, we will be able to see him. So that was very, um, with our naked eye, that is, being visible with our naked eye. That's, that's the key word. So um, this could be very impactful for Aries and, well, all of the fire signs, um, Leo and Sagittarius. So here, this is about an, the inner teacher, the inner flame being ignited. So for many people, um, this could, they could feel this coming on. Now, what's really interesting is that on that same day, Venus moves into Gemini. And why this is very, very important, you see, Mars is in Cancer right now. But before he was in Cancer, he was in Gemini. And when he moved into the sign of Gemini, and he was there for a very, very long time. He was there longer than normal because he did, um, he did station and go retrograde. So in this, okay, he brought war between brothers, between the siblings, uh, the sign for Gemini or the twins. So the God of war entered in the sign of twins. And that was around about the time the Ukraine and uh, Russian war began. So this is very interesting. And now we have Venus uh, coming right behind Mars and going into Gemini. So you can see how this is going to change that energy just a little bit. Because now we have the goddess of love and of harmony and beauty going into Gemini, these twins. And she's going to say, hey, peace is here and we can have peace. Um, we just got to... We've got to work on things, these things. We've got to harmonize these energies. We've got to figure out what is going to be of the highest good, the highest possibility. So that was going on. And then um, on my last, um, my last show, I talked about um, Venus when she moved into the sign of Gemini, that she was trying Pluto and Aquarius. So um, this is going to, this is telling us to entertain ideas without actions. Sometimes we have to, um, we have these ideas, we need to entertain them first in our minds and, and try to strategize and try to put all these pieces together before we act. Um, you know, a lot of times we act before thinking about this and we end up with a, a jumbled mess. And we can see that in our world right now. There's there's a lot of things that we're not thought about before doing. So um, anyway, we're going to go a little bit going on further. We had um, Saturn in Pisces, which is bringing us a reality a reality um, um, <clears throat> check to us. He's saying, "Hey, look," and he's saying, "What you thought?" You know, he's he's saying that you know. It, what you thought was correct really isn't. And those things that no matter how sure we were in our thinking of how things are, he's showing us that we're missing something. We are off and we need to wake up and open our eyes and get a grip. 
Uh, Mars in Cancer, though, um, and he's going to be in Cancer until May the 20th. And he's going to make us feel like we have to protect ourselves, protect our homes, protect that which we love. This can be mama bear type energy. Um, this can also mean that Mars is now taking a back seat. He's not really out there warring with everyone, um, bringing the war in between the siblings. He is now retreating and he's like, there's some things here at the home front that I've got to take care of. And this needs to be taken care of because all of this is, is messing up the structure of this. This is why Saturn is a reality check, guys. Something isn't right. So this is bringing us to now we are at April the 20th. And now it seems that the energy is shifting a little bit more because we're getting ready to have a new moon in Aries. Yes, this is our second new moon in Aries. And this is very odd. Aries does not like to repeat itself. Um, it does the energy and it's there, it's done what it needs to do and it goes on. But now it seems that there's something else that needs to happen because as soon as we have this new moon, um, you know, this new moon is going to be taking place at 29 degrees and 50 minutes of Aries. This is just 10 minutes away from Taurus. Okay. This is how close this is. So this, this, um, this spark, this idea, this, um, this kind of, uh, energy is going to be quickly um, rooted or I should say grounded into Taurus energy. So let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Um, this is going to be, you know, normally the eclipses, they only last for, but they, the energy is for six months, right? But this is actually going to last for years to come because there's going to be different aspects, including Pluto is going to have an aspect to this uh, degree sign where this is taking place in. Um, he's going to have different aspects throughout the few years um, as he is going, you know, as he's moving in Aquarius, then he's going to move back to Capricorn, and then he's going to go back into Aquarius. So this is something that's really going to be felt for years to come, okay? Not just this is, an, this is a, a theme for the next six months. No, this is going to be felt for years to come. And this new moon solar eclipse is going to be at 29 degrees and 50 minutes of Aries, and it's going to be at 12, 13 a.m. This is Eastern time. All of my, um, all of my times are in Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, so you will have to adjust to your neck of the woods. Um, so, I'm sorry, this at right now, it's going to be in daylight saving time. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, in the United States, we are observing um, daylight savings time. So, this is 12, 13 Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So, then at um, 12, 30, so this is just, you know, a little over 15 minutes later, the moon will be moving into the sign of Taurus. And then at 4.43 a.m., the sun will be moving into the sign of Taurus as well. So we're going to be grounding that energy. But um, what is that energy? Well, one of all, it, for first off, it's going to be very powerful. And it's really going to have, um, it's really going to resonate. It's going to have that frequency that's still going to be there. And um, it's going to be it's going to be very much about a beginning and an end. It is going to be one where um, it's it's like the energy of no turning back. It's time to do it. You either do it or you don't do it. And this is the energy of no turning back, leaving the past behind. The thing about Aries is Aries does not like to carry over. Does not like reruns. Okay, so he's saying you need to get rid of that if you want to have this. If you want to do this then you're going to have to release this because we like to sit on the, the fence post too much. We like to sit on the fence and teeter totter back and forth in between these. Well, this can work to a certain point, but there comes a time that decisions have to be made. Choices have to be made. Um, that is also what, um, the twins, um, represent as well. Decisions. Now, <clears throat> um, Aries is about initiation. It's about leadership. Um, it's really wanting to, um, to just 
it, it's fiery. So it's this ignition that pushes you into the next phase. And that's why they call it initiation. Because initiation, even though we do them, you know, we may do them like completely, um, you know, of willing. We are willingly doing these. We are being thrusted into a different energy, into a different way of being. We're going from one level to an up another. So, you know, and, and then we get to the sense to where when if we know better, we are expected to do better. And that's the biggest things because I don't think many people understand this, especially when they get into leadership roles. They begin to think that they can... Um, they can just ask, act off the whims and these knee-jerk reactions. And this is not something that a true leader does. A leader takes in, he, 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 um, he sets and he processes what has went on. Um, sometimes there are knee-jerk, sometimes we have to make those reactions just like that. We have to do those sometimes. But when it comes to bigger things, we need to take a back seat and really think, is this the best way? Is this where, um, is this where uh, we should go? Me as a leader, am I leading the people in the right direction? Is this a, a true place that we need to go? And we also need to recognize, um, you know, that as we are seeing, things aren't as they seem. There's this big illusion that has been draped across us, and it's a, it's a process of having to become disillusioned. So we also have to we have to understand that. Now, right now, um, the biggest thing about Aries is Aries is I mean um, Mars I should say, Mars is out of bound, and that is when he is 23 degrees um, off the ellipt elliptical. Um, so the first week of May is really going to bring a great deal of change to us. And it is because of this solar eclipse and because all the unfolding that has been happening and leading to this um, to this situation, to this energy. This is big energy. This is life-changing energy. This is taking the next step. Um, and like I said, it's no turning back. This is also a rare energy. And I want to talk about this is because while... This is kind of like a hybrid. And what this means is that some places uh, we will expect to have the um, annular eclipse, but then what will happen is it will turn to a total solar eclipse and then to a partial. And it all depends on where you're located on our beautiful Mother Earth. Um, for those that will experience the total eclipse, that will be in um, Australia. So in that region, you should see the, so the total solar eclipse. And then those past, uh, past that will be receiving the partial. So this only happens like at 3% of the solar eclipses. So this is very rare. Okay, this is very rare energy because you can see how it's, it's almost like a shape-shifting type of energy. Okay, um... Now, as we, as we go into this, um, Aries energy will still be dominant, even though the moon and the sun will quickly move into Taurus, um, it's Aries is still going to be dominant. And this can mean, this can be warlike energy, but we have to understand that this is action energy. It's wanting to call to action, but Luckily, this is going to be um, through an aspect with Saturn. This is going to be grounded and uh, Saturn will bring that practicality to us and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aries is I am and most Arians know who they are. They may go through a time where they do question and they may have some growth, but most Arians are very confident in who they are and where they're going. Well, Sometimes where they're going, but they're very confident in who they are. And they understand that there's an unfolding and, and this is the cycles. So this is also, um, this will be carried into our personal life. Um, Aries is very personal. It's about the self and the inner self. So we could, um, a, a good question for us to ask ourselves during the solar eclipse and new moon and Aries is how much 
have you stepped into your role of individuality? How much have you stepped into the role of who you are? If you're saying you're these things, how much have you stepped into that? Are you, are you operating from that role? Or are you just giving it lip service? Um, we have, we used to have a term, it was the armchair warriors, you know, and that means those who sit, sit behind a computer screen and are the warriors. Well, some people can't get out in the world and that's all they have. And I get that. But for those of you who can, are you really walking your talk? And even those who really can't get out in the world and their only communication is through the internet, normally they have things going on in their in their lives that are um, that resonate with that. So you know we have to look at those things. What I'm talking about is those people who sat back and want it all just to trickle down to them without wanting to do anything. Aries is all about action. It tells you if you want it, get off your butt and get it. So the solar eclipse can give us a jump into um, into something else. It can give us like a, almost like a quantum jump into a new energy. Just like Uranus kind of shocks us and makes us wake up and, you know, pushes us forward into um, the next thing, okay? This too can do the same thing, but in a different way because it's saying that um, there's this sudden end that is pushing us into uh, something new. Solar eclipses are like Pluto as well, uh, being that they do bring permanent changes to our lives. So when I say something shocking, something um, happening, this is something that happens that makes you change your life. Um, again, this is life-changing, permanent life-changing events. And we have to look, you know, so many of us want to look at the surface and just categorize it as the surface. But we have to understand the many different layers here. Just like I spoke before, uh, the last show about Jupiter. Jupiter is known as a joyous god, yes. But back in the time, he was his the um, Jupiter Lapis, the the stone of Jupiter, was where the higher officials took their oaths, and that's very important to remember because he represents oaths, oaths made by these people who uh, go into leaderships, go into protection, um, detail, that sort of thing. Um, even those who follow in in the path, these are oaths that we take. Are you living up to your oaths? Are you doing exactly what you said you would do? Um, it's going into that big, big time. So um, these changes in our lives, these are endings. These are endings of one thing and beginnings of another. Pluto destroys those things that have gained so much power they have become toxic. And we see this through his trip through Capricorn. We see it in the top-down structures, such as all uh, the governments and banking systems and those higher pharmaceutical, so forth. We're seeing how all of this stuff is being exposed and seeing what that has, um, that has brought in. Now, what is really important is that this, so after this um, solar eclipse, the sun will meet North Node because the North Node is in those beginning uh, degrees of, um, of Taurus. And this, the North Node represents where we are going. So this new, this, this new beginning, that is going to, the sun is going to take that new energy, the ending, leaving the past behind, the toxic, that which is, that which is making us sick. Okay, that which has ill intent toward us is leaving that behind and beginning to walk in a healthy way. And with, with Saturn, with his aspects that's going on, it's going to be in a way that's going to be healthy because Saturn encourages boundaries. Boundaries are needed, especially in our world. We live in a 3D world. This is a world of structure. Um, so definitely, definitely um, needing that energy. Now, as the sun is moving, um, moving out of, um, out of Aries, this will, um, as it's moving through Aries and going into Taurus, this is going to bring us more of acknowledgement that we need to be more self-sufficient. 
Um, we give people way too much credit when they have wonderful uh, little abbreviations before their name or after their name. They think, we, we tend to think that they know everything. Well, these people are just human. They don't know everything. Um, they may know a little bit about a lot or they may know a lot about a little. Um, we have to really look at them and see. Um, this is where, you know, we were talking about uh, bringing our sovereignty back and what is good for us. Nobody in this world will, is going to be able to say what is good and what is bad for you. No one. I don't care who it is. Um, children, if you're under 18, listen to this. You listen to your parents because your parents are trying to guide you. Normally, I will say, parents try to help their children so that they won't make the same mistakes that they made so that they might have an easier life. And in saying that, sometimes by doing that, we kind of mess up things, you know? So I don't want to get off topic with that. Let's keep going. Um, we have five planets in Aries, and that's strong, strong energy. This is, these five planets, the number five also is about change. We are definitely in a change. And yes, this is chaotic energy because guess what? That's where creation comes from. And I think a majority of us, especially if you're listening to this show, you know this. And that's the good thing that you have. That's how you can empower yourself. Um, you know, our shot, our first, second, and third chakras have been attacked tremendously attacking our structure, our stability, our foundation, attacking our sexuality and who we are and trying to take that away or taking our creativity away. Um, and then we have our solar plexus, which is our empowerment, which is uh, who we know. That's our confidence, right? All of this is happening and we have to really understand that don't look outside, look within. There's your power. This is you. No one else in this world is like you. You are completely unique, completely unique. And all of these five planets is saying that it's time to get real with yourself. It's time to look at you. It's time to heal better. Chiron is time to visionize better for yourself. Jupiter is time to take your power back, um, your sovereignty back, the sun. And Eris is saying, hey, you know, there's some harm here that's happening because they're having this big party over here and one of us hasn't been invited. You're all talking about what's best for us and you're not even including us. Excuse me? So you see how she is standing up and she's saying no. And Iris is formidable. She will not let up. Um, so this is going to be, this is going to be really, really some, some really strong energy and um, those that are changing. Now, one of the things I, I do want to talk about um, is that um, is that um, Mercury and Uranus is going to have a conjunction, and this is going to be shocking news um, coming to up, uh, coming into light. This could be in finance or or our money. Um, and that'll be the first part of May. It's an old collapsing. Remember that right after the solar eclipse, we are going to have Mercury going retrograde. And that is one of, um, he will be going into retrograde and then we're going to be going back and regressing into that. I will go deeper into that on one of my personal shows. That'll be, a, that'll be aired um, on privately. But Chiron is still um, Chiron is still in Aries, and as Mars is in Cancer, he's going to have a square. So this is really going to bring up a wound early from childhood that we may be experiencing as well that we need to heal from. And Eris at twenty four degrees of Aries and Jupiter meet up. And that is really going to expand her street fighting capabilities. Iris is our street fighter. Um, but again, this is all in Aries. So it's bringing on new beginnings. Um, her, um, Humea is in um, one degree of Pluto. Is it one degree of 
Scorpio and it's squaring Pluto and she'll be doing so until 2028. Now she has a 283 year orbit. Um, so this is very feminine, but this is also about uh, cutting and lancing the wound of toxicity. Um, she is the Hawaiian fertility goddess of regeneration. So um, she understands the earth rhythm. So she is connected to um, she's connected to that um, to natural law. So again, we're being shown uh, to connect to natural law. Now, um, on the 25th, the sun will sextile Saturn that's going to be stabilizing all of this energy that's been going on through the eclipse. And that is going to be greatly needed because the sun, the sun will be forming a conjunction with the north node at four degrees. And that's really going to make us start looking further into our future and where we are going and how it's going to manifest. Um, you know, Mars square Chiron, um, that will, that can cause us to not stand up for ourselves. So we really have to watch with that, okay? Um, again, Mars is in Cancer, so we're more focused inward. So it could mean us stepping back and not standing up for ourselves. But when Venus has a sextile with your with Chiron, that's going to bring more stabilize, more healing energy to the uh, mix. But here, right after Mars squares Chiron on the 25th, by the 29th, he's going to be sextile in Uranus. That re-stimulates this um, the old Mars uh, square Uranus that we had, um, and he's going to say it's time to do something about it. So there's still a connection between Mars and Chiron, and the Moon moving through um, moving through Virgo by the end of the week. So again, this is healing. Um, it's there is the stable energy that's here that we can tap into. So if we are working at manifesting during this. We do have those stabilizing energies that we can use in order to bring about, you know, to bring um, the to, to bring the un unmanifest into the the manifest, the tangible world. So this is a lot of changing, and this eclipse is again, it's the ending of one and a beginning of another. And with the solar, this is this represents the king. Right? So we have several things coming up regarding kings. And this can also mean a king stepping down, a top official stepping down. So we do have that energy there. So it's quite interesting seeing what's going to be coming, what's going on in our world, those events that are coming up within the next few months. Um, you know, this is, this is quite interesting. Um, it's it's like the king the king must die the king has to go there has to be a new king because this king is not working out this king will not be able to go forward with this higher the higher ideal for humanity the highest the higher good for humanity and this is what we have to look at is the higher good for humanity and this is all happening in Aries. So this is very, very intense energy. Um, um, I, I do want to say that the last time um, that the nodes, like the, the nodal, um, every time we have an eclipse, it takes place next to the nodes, okay? And our nodes right now are fixing to go into a, uh, into a change. They will change signs from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra. Um, and this, you know, this, the last time this happened, let's see here, was April the 19th of 2004. Um, you can look at 2004 and then the lunar eclipse, the nodal lunar eclipse uh, back in um, October the 18th of 2013. So, so this is, those are some years that this will be uh, um, tapping into. I'll make a bigger video on this later and I will talk uh, a little bit more in depth about this. But there's a lot of things that are going on. This is, just, I'm just giving you a quick picture of what is happening in our skies. There is definite endings, there is definite beginnings, and this is a time that we need to go forward and leave that 
the ill willed leave the um, leave those ways behind those toxic ways so that we can go forward in a healthy and productive way again we have to look at what's going to be healthy and productive and I think that um, that's kind of been a little bit misplaced we need to have a, a, another look at that and that's where Saturn comes in and gives us those reality checks and tells us to wake up and get real so that is it with the astrology stay tuned to the tarot because it, I just, I can't wait to see what they have to say. It's going to be amazing and blessed new moon and uh, Aries and happy solar eclipse. And I wish you all the best and um, stay tuned.